We all play video games for lots of different reasons. For an escape, to stimulate our creativity, to explore a new world, to have fun with friends and loved ones, or quite simply, just because they're so comforting. Video games, at least to me, are just like chicken soup for the soul in a way. There's an inherent coziness to taking a moment to pause and realize, you know what, forget whatever I'm doing right now, this can wait, I'm going to explore that weird stage I just unlocked in my new game. That coziness can also be found in a game's art style, like the craft aesthetic in Yoshi's Woolly World, or the music, like Bramble Blast from Donkey Kong Country. Even in the sounds, like when you find an extra heart container in The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, that really unforgettable little jingle that they give you. And also in the satisfying controls, like those found in Super Mario Odyssey. Video games make us feel all warm, cozy, and satisfied. And for me at least, this effect becomes particularly amplified during the autumn season. I know this is all going to sound really corny, but oh well. When the autumn season approaches, I always appreciate the beautiful colors on display. That short window of time where we see vivid oranges, reds, and yellows contrast against blue or gray skies and green grass. This is also the time when I reflect on everything I'm grateful for. My good health, my accomplishments, both the small and the big ones positive changes happening in the world, and the memories I've been able to share with loved ones. It's important for all of us to pause and consider ourselves as it relates to our past, the present, and the future. Strictly speaking about video games, in this way, I enjoy looking back on my favorite experiences from the past, the ones I'm having now, and those that I'll soon be experiencing. Another thing I love to think about in the fall is all the exciting announcements and releases and interesting controversies found within the gaming world. For example, I remember in 2010, I would fondly remember all the fun marketing and weird releases during the GameCube and Game Boy Advance era. I was thinking about how much I was loving Super Mario Galaxy 2 and Sin and Punishment 2, Star Successor at the time. I just, I couldn't believe that we were getting these sequels, the the sequel to Super Mario Galaxy and a sequel to this weird Japanese exclusive arcade shooter. I just was so thankful to have them and I love them so much. I was also really excited for Retro Studios' upcoming take on Donkey Kong Country, which was going to be released that November. And I also couldn't get over how we would soon be able to enjoy Nintendo games in true HD once the next console comes out. Now this year, in 2021, I'm thinking about a bunch of things, honestly. One of those things is that I'm just thinking about how much I love Banjo-Kazooie. It's just such a masterpiece. And soon enough, I'll be able to play this game anywhere I want, however I want. It just is so satisfying for Banjo-Kazooie to finally be back on a Nintendo console. It feels so right. I'm also thinking about just how random and cool the DS was. There are so many weird and great things that came out of that console. I'm also thinking about the games that I'm playing. So Luigi's Mansion 3 is one of those games, and I have to say I'm just so grateful to be playing such a game during the fall season. It's so satisfying. It's a great game in general, and I'm just so grateful that they're continuing the Luigi's Mansion series. So I highly recommend Luigi's Mansion 3 if you haven't already played it. And if you have, feel free to go back and play it again. Um, Another game that I'm playing is Shantae. This is the Game Boy Color port that is now on Switch. And Shantae is a game that I always wanted to play, but I couldn't get it when it originally came out and also I was kind of like a stubborn young boy not wanting to play as a girl at the time so I'm grateful that I've matured in that way and that it is ported on the switch perfectly Uh, it plays perfectly and it really is a masterpiece of a game Um, plays great looks great sounds great Uh, it really is a magical game so another game I recommend but finally I also can't wait to get my hands on a little game called Metroid Dread. 
and all the goodies that are going to come with that special edition. There is no better feeling than going for a nice autumn walk and catching yourself realizing, wait, oh crap, Metroid Dread is actually real, and it's releasing in a week for the Switch. This isn't a dream, it's actually happening. It's just really satisfying. And finally, I love that all three major video game companies are finding success in their own unique ways as we transition into this next generation. But that exciting uptick in game releases also means that the holidays are right around the corner. Shortly after Metroid Dread releases, we'll be dressing up in stupid costumes, eating candy, and then later gathering with family to enjoy a nice Thanksgiving meal. And then shortly after that, I'll be gathering around the Christmas tree with all of my family. What makes it so special this time is that we haven't been able to do this since 2019, so I'm really grateful for that. In any case, the fall season truly is a magical time. Considering how this is a podcast based on nostalgia, autumn is often closely associated with my nostalgia for various games. I'll never forget how excited I was when I was 13 and moved on to my town's version of a high school. It was close enough where I could walk if I wanted to, which opened up all these awesome opportunities for me to hang out with people. And this was especially exciting because I was growing up, I was becoming a young man, and found so many new things to be passionate about. During this time, I was gushing over the Nintendo 64, which was my first main console. And also Pokemon Crystal on the Game Boy Color. That game just turned me into a gamer. In addition, I just received a Game Boy Advance for my birthday and was still awestruck by how I could take games like Rayman Advance and Mario Kart Super Circuit, these games that looked so amazing at the time, I could take these games with me anywhere. Did I? No, not really. <laughs> but I did like the idea. However, this was a time where I first fell in love. I started thinking about college and my career and life and couldn't stop thinking about what was next from Nintendo. After Banjo-Kazooie, Star Fox 64, and Mario Kart 64, I was so ready for the GameCube. My mouth was foaming <laughs> at anything I saw about it in Nintendo Power. The possibilities seemed endless. After such eye-opening gaming experiences and the dopamine-infused roller coaster ride that was the 90s, I couldn't wait for whatever transcending experiences awaited me next in this new century. In my mind, my GameCube purchase was bound to bring me Banjo 3E, the next big Star Fox, and other crazy experiences I couldn't even imagine. Now, as we all have come to know, some of these expectations led to disappointment, some of these things kind of happens, but with mixed results. But also, some of what I had hoped for delivered unforgettable experiences that not only caught me completely off guard, but exceeded even my wildest dreams, like Metroid Prime. One of my favorite memories was playing GameCube games after school, going for a brisk autumn walk with music, and appreciating all the awesome adventures I unexpectedly fell in love with. And while I know this might seem silly, I kind of liken my experience with the GameCube to life in general. When you grow up, sometimes we expect the next big rareware experience, so to speak. But we end up not getting that sometimes. Instead, we can be given the first big Retro Studios experience. And that's okay. It's more than okay. It's awesome. And while that may not be what we initially signed up for, it begins to grow on us and grow with us. And eventually we realize, you know what? I wouldn't really have it any other way. I may not have gotten Banjo 3E, but I did get Pikmin. I did get Animal Crossing. I did get Donkey Kong Jungle Beat and Chibi Robo. Also, I hate anything horror related. I always have, or so I thought. But I'll never forget how colossal Resident Evil 4 was when it came out. For me, the autumn season is a special opportunity to learn and appreciate. 
every year in a console's life begins with wild speculation, predictions, and expectations. Something similar can be said about each year of our own lives. So during this fall season, when you cozy up at a bonfire or snatch your switch up for one more stage with your favorite hoodie on, I hope that you reflect, learn, and appreciate how far you've come, whatever that means to you. We've all experienced hardship, success, and everything in between over the past few years. However, regardless of the path your life has taken more recently, I hope you find comfort in the fact that, at least when it comes to gaming, life, and being a Nintendo fan, feels pretty good right now. The Switch launched with The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, Splatoon 2, a bunch of other games, and Super Mario Odyssey soon after. What an awesome launch. It's so rare that a console releases with such a consistent string of heavy hitters. That said, sure, Nintendo hasn't graced us with the likes of Mario Kart 9 or Pikmin 4 or a next-gen Star Fox game, but they have delivered so many other exciting titles to us. Titles like Ring Fit Adventure, Luigi's Mansion 3, like I mentioned before, a new Pokemon Snap, Astral Chain, and Super Mario Maker 2, just to name a few. Yes, there's been way too many ports, but we have the best version of many of these ports, which we can also take with us anywhere. And, I mean, depending on how you look at it, I don't know if you count Super Smash Bros. Ultimate as a port or not, but regardless, they have given us the most wild roster of Super Smash Bros. fighters ever including Banjo-Kazooie. And these are just the first party titles that I'm mentioning. I think the Switch is going to be the first Nintendo console that's remembered not so much for its first party offerings, but more so for the massive amounts of quality third party and indie titles that can be enjoyed on the console. And that's not to mention all the titles that are on the way still. We still have Breath of the Wild 2, Metroid Prime 4, Bayonetta 3, which we saw recently, and everything else we don't even know about yet. Will we get Star Fox Racing? What will Breath of the Wild 2 be like? What other DLC awaits us? And will the Switch OLED model change how we think about console iterations? Being a Nintendo fan often feels like being on a roller coaster. So this autumn, as the air becomes more brisk, as you sip on your apple cider or your pumpkin spice latte, don't act like you don't like those, because we all like them. (laughs) As you take a moment to appreciate the changing colors of the leaves, and especially when you bring home that brand new video game, wherever you are in life and whatever you're playing, I hope that you're able to take a moment to pause and enjoy the ride. Now, I wanted to end this episode by suggesting a few games that you might enjoy playing this season. Maybe it's just me, but there are certain games and certain types of games that are especially fun during the fall. So, as I mentioned before, I'm currently playing and really enjoying Luigi's Mansion 3 on Switch. The previous two Luigi's Mansion games are also excellent, so you can find the original on the GameCube and also on the 3DS, And the sequel to Luigi's Mansion 1 can be found on the 3DS. And I enjoy all three of them in very different ways, so I definitely recommend those. But obviously, many games with a darker tone fit in with the more subdued mood that the autumn season inherently invokes. So on the GameCube, I would recommend Eternal Darkness, Geist, Splinter Cell, Uh, Any of the Resident Evil series games, especially Resident Evil 4, but all of them are good in their own way. And also the Lord of the Rings games. There's uh, The Two Towers and Return of the King. Uh, Those two especially. Those are fun uh, hack and slash games that are great for the autumn season. On the Wii, there's the two epic Mickey games. Mad World, which is just completely absurd and black and white and red and just... It's really gory and rated M, so keep that in mind, but it's a really, really cool, interesting experience. Uh, Dead Space Extraction is also great, and then there's Deadly Creatures, Silent Hill, Shattered Memories, Uh, any of the Guitar Hero games, honestly, there's just something about that. Maybe it's just nostalgia for me, but I just love playing them in the fall. There's also House of the Dead Overkill, 
uh, House of the Dead 2 and 3, and both of the Conduit games. Now, on the Wii U, there's obviously going to be less titles for me to suggest, but I would definitely recommend Twilight Princess HD. Yoshi's Woolly World doesn't get any cozier than that. Um, actually, I would even suggest Snoopy's Grand Adventure. I know that might sound silly. I think I uh, heard about this game from uh, like Metal Jesus Rocks, that um, YouTube guy, and never thought it would be worth playing, but it's a very, very fun platformer. Very cozy, great sound design, uh, and really beautiful too. So give Snoopy's Grand Adventure a try. It's also in the 3DS. And then Batman Arkham City Armored Edition. Really awesome game. On the 3DS, I would suggest Alice in Wonderland DS. Nobody ever talks about that game. I don't know why, but it is a really cool like puzzle action adventure game. And then there's Aliens Infestation, Dementium. There's uh, two versions of that. I would definitely recommend the second one. Little Red Riding Hood's Zombie Barbecue. It's a really absurd title, but one of the funnest games, uh, well, DS games that I've ever played. It's just a crazy shooter. Uh, then there's 999, a great mystery game. Uh, the Professor Layton titles. There's a whole bunch, and they're all excellent. Ghost Trick Phantom Detective and Hotel Dusk Room 215. On the 3DS, we have Cave Story 3D. Zelda Majora's Mask, of course, and Codename Steam. I don't know why, but there's just something about the fall season that just puts me in the mood for strategy games. On uh, the Game Boy Advance, I would suggest Spider-Man, Mysterio's Menace, and Pinball of the Dead. And for Switch, I have a bunch of suggestions, so I'm just going to throw them all out there as quickly as I can. So I obviously have to suggest both Ori games. They're very mysterious and just great Metroidvania games. Uh, Ghost of a Tale, which is just a really cute, mysterious little adventure game where you're this mouse trying to explore this castle. And then there's Carry On, which is a weird twist on a Metroidvania genre. Return of the Obra Dinn. Both Little Nightmares games. Uh, these aren't too scary. It's kind of like a weird mix of cute and creepy. So definitely suggest those. Uh, Darksiders. There's a whole bunch of different Darksiders games. They're really fun. The Mummy Demastered by WayForward Games. Both Bayonetta games. Can't say enough good things about those if you like action games. Uh, Little Inferno, which is kind of like a weird game where it, you're sitting by a fireplace and you basically burn different items together and see how they interact so it's kind of like a puzzle game but it's really charming and delightful it's made by the people who made world of goo which i also highly recommend uh, if you like physics-based puzzle games then there's blackbird which is a really weird creepy uh, shoot 'em up game that's has a very interesting art style uh, forgotten ann thumper slay the spire minute gone home Flipping Death, which is a very quirky story-based game. Uh, Bloodstained Curse of the Moon. Uh, there's two games, both excellent if you like Castlevania games. Salt and Sanctuary, another Metroidvania. Axiom Verge 1 and 2. The sequel just came out, and I hear it's very good. But the original is also awesome, and doesn't get any better than that when it comes to Metroidvanias. And then there's The End is Nigh, which is an excellent darker themed platformer made by Nicholas or Nicholas, however you say it. Really, really fun. Uh, and I wanted to throw out three more that I kind of forgot to suggest before. So all of the Wario Land games, I don't know why, but I just love playing Wario Land games in the fall. And then there's Hollow Knight. I haven't gotten to my copy just yet, but I hear it's an excellent Metroidvania game. And speaking of Metroidvania games, one of the games that makes up the title of the genre is Castlevania. So obviously there's a whole bunch of different Castlevania games. There's that new Advance collection, which just came out on the Switch. So all the Game Boy Advance games in one collection doesn't get better than that. The DS games are also excellent. So basically, for me at least, I just like adventure games in the fall. Any kind of adventure game where there's like a darker theme and some type of mystery that you have to solve or some type of creepy tone that adds to it. So if you're looking for a great autumn gaming experience, feel free to check out any of the titles that I just suggested. Uh, if you think you might need a little bit more clarity on something or 
If you even want more suggestions, always feel free to reach out to me on Facebook. But this concludes my mini episode. Thank you all very much for listening. I really appreciate it, and I do hope that you enjoyed this episode. If you did enjoy it, please feel free to leave us a rating. But no matter what, I hope you all have an excellent autumn season, and I look forward to the next time that we'll be able to chat. So thank you all again for listening, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye now.